Okay, so uh, let's do the simple extensions. So, so this this is going to be a video about simple extensions and minimal polynomials. All right, so um, so, so let's let uh, k over f be a, uh, it be a field extension. All right, I am going to uh, look at an intermediate field. I'm interested in these intermediate fields. So, um, and so let alpha an element of k, right? So the the field extension. So let me just do this. So definition. So f adjoin alpha, right? So this is a field. This is contained in k. So this is all rational. Uh, is what we call is called a simple. We we've introduced this notation before, but this is is a simple. Is called simple extension. All right, and so it's just via given some single uh, uh, alpha here. So what does this thing look like explicitly? F of alpha. So it's the set of F of alphas over G of alphas, where G of alpha is not equal to zero, right? And F of X and G of X. So these are polynomials in F of X, right? So I guess, so like this. So F, so we have this. So this is um, uh, uh, what a, a simple extension is. So it's just, so we just adjoin things again. Uh, uh, so two simple ex examples. Uh, Q adjoin I is a simple extension. Of Q. And, um, you know, Q, uh, uh, you know, Q adjoin T is a simple extension. One is transcendental, one is not transcendental. Okay, so this is what we have. All right. <coughs> okay, so <clears throat> now I can tell you what, what simple uh, extensions are going to look like. I'm, I'm going to essentially characterize them. Um, uh, one second, I need to make a new, uh, new uh, page in this thing. Okay, so uh, I got the new pages now. This is, um, I'm using paper, by the way. Um, so <clears throat> it used to be, bamboo used to be better, but now I've switched, and this is apparently what I have to use now. So, <clears throat> all right, so consider, okay, so now we, we talked about simple extensions. Now let's consider alpha and k, algebraic. over f all right so um, what we can do now is we can consider a, a, a certain special map called the evaluation map so for every I mean this so so what we'll do is we're gonna do um, so we're gonna do if alpha right and it's gonna be a map here from polynomial rings in X to F adjoin alpha so this is a sub ring of K and what it does is it takes a polynomial and it evaluates it at at alpha. Okay, so this is a ring homomorphism. So that's a, something you can check. Okay, so evaluation is is a so what I mean by that is that if I take two polynomials like this and I multiply them. Right, and we have we have this one. So we just, you know, the evaluation of the the product is the product of the evaluations, and the this the evaluation of the sum is the sum of the evaluations. All right, my looks like my I'm drifting a little bit. Okay, so but this is um uh this is a thing. Oh, I don't want to. Okay, so um. All right. So what am I doing? So so um, 
All right, so this is the evaluation map. And uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to look at the kernel of this map. Okay, so so the so this is a PID, F, F adjoin X is a PID. So we know that the kernel, okay, so since, so since f of x is a PID, right, then um, that we can, so there exists some m alpha of x uh, in f of x such that this kernel of this thing is generated by this dude. Okay, so, and um, moreover, uh, this can be made unique by making by making it monic okay so so it's unique by making it mon oh it monic and what does monic mean so monic means that we just clear the coefficients so that this means like uh, so m alpha looks like a0 plus a1x plus and then we go to x to some degree here, right? And so the, the coefficient of this, this polynomial, so the coefficient here, so the important part is that this coefficient is one. That's what it means to be monic. Okay? All right, so we we have the kernel of evaluation map. And, and notice that, uh, so since it's in the kernel, right, um, it, well, it's gonna, it's gonna vanish, right? So since, so since in particular, since uh, m alpha uh, of x is in the kernel of the evaluation map at alpha, well, we have that m alpha of x is equal to zero, or so m alpha of alpha is equal to zero. So when I evaluate m alpha at alpha, I get zero. So this this is the this is kind of the polynomial that makes alpha algebraic. Okay, that's the idea. Um, uh, okay. Um, also, also what's cool is that also uh, every, okay, so also every non-zero um, irreducible, so okay, so, so let's, let's, ch let's check about w w what else we can say about this, this thing. Okay, so first I, I claim that this, this M alpha is, is irreducible. Okay, so why is it irreducible? So claim one. M alpha of x is irreducible or prime. All right, so what's the proof of this? So proof, well, um, so, oh, okay, so let's write this. So f of x modulo m alpha of x Right, so this is isomorphic to the image of the evaluation map, and this is a subring of K, and this is a field. So this tells us that um, this tells us that that uh, m alpha of x is. So this tells us that m alpha of x is prime, and. Uh, this tells us that um, that you, you know prime ideals are, are are this this ideal is prime. So this tells us that the element here is prime, right? And that's the same thing as irreducible. Okay, and then maybe as a remark here, so this is a domain. So when you quotient. So since the image is a domain, you know, you have to quotient out by a prime ideal. That's what it means to be a prime ideal. Okay. Um, and that's, that's all I wanted to say about this. So what the other remark that I, I, I want to make in addition to this is that, um, uh, so, so in, in f of x, every prime ideal is maximal, right? So, so weird fact, fun fact, right? So non-zero, prime ideals of, uh, of f adjoin x are maximal. Okay, this gives you a very strange consequence, right? Um, so uh, this, this tells us some, so this tells us a, a, maybe a theorem 
right? And it says that, well, f of x modulo m alpha of x here. So this thing is isomorphic to, well, it's isomorphic to uh, f alpha. We knew that, right? This is the first isomorphism theorem. But it's also isomorphic to f alpha. It has to be a field, right? So the, this has to be a field. So this must be a field. Uh, and it must be a field when, um, uh, so so this must be a field, uh, well, I guess it just must be a field because uh, non-zero prime ideals are maximal. So, so it, uh, provided, Um, you know, uh, evaluation at alpha uh, has non-trivial kernel. So let's say if if alpha is algebraic, uh, then uh, then we have the following. Okay. So alpha being algebraic means that there's something that evaluates to zero. That's exactly what being algebraic means, right? Okay. Okay, so, um, all right, so um, so this element here is called the minimal polynomial. So the, the this, this element is called the minimal polynomial. minimal polynomial of uh, alpha. Okay. Um, so what, what else can we say about this? So why, what makes it so minimal? Oh, so let me say a lemma. So let alpha be in K. Uh, uh, so let's start with K over Q, K over F, uh, an extension of fields. Okay, so let alpha be in K, uh, then uh, uh, be al let alpha this thing be algebraic. Um, so if uh, f of x, so if we if we take another polynomial, uh, has alpha as a root. So i.e. f of alpha is equal to zero, then uh, m alpha of x divides f of x. Okay, so it means that if you have some polynomial, right, and uh, alpha, you know that you know that alpha is a root, then uh, you know that it, it, it must be coming from the minimal polynomial. So the, 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 the upshot here is that if so this is saying uh, if f was equal to zero, it is caused by by a factor. I mean, it makes it like the minimal one, right? Um, uh, yeah. So, so it, it's yeah, it's truly minimal. Okay. So let me let me just let me prove this. So the proof is is uh, is straightforward. You just use that uh, what it means to be an element of an ideal. So um, so if f alpha is zero, then this this is exactly what it means. To, then then f is in the kernel of evaluation at alpha, and this thing is generated by m alpha of x, right? And so to be an element of here. And and so so, f is an element of maybe I can write f of x. I don't know if we should get yeah, f of x. So f of x is an element of m alpha of x, uh, if and only if m alpha of x divides f of x. Okay, so that's what it means to be uh, in con uh, uh, to be in this ideal generate in, in a principal ideal. All right. Um, 
Okay, so that, that's what minimal polynomials are. So uh, other things that we can say about this. Uh, so, so it allows us to compute the degree. So, so let me just kind of give an upshot. So, um, so let me, so, so some upshots, like some consequences, so consequence. Okay, so if alpha in K is algebraic, over f okay so here we have to do this thing again so we fix k containing alpha okay k containing f so we take, fix a field extension then uh so then we have that the degree of uh not q the degree of this so the degree of this extension here so this thing is is equal to um uh this uh, the degree of m alpha, right? And moreover, one alpha alpha squared alpha d minus one uh, is a basis uh, for f alpha as an f vector space. Uh, where here, where we've taken uh, d to be the degree of m alpha. Okay, so this is uh, this is one of the cool corollaries of this thing, and so let me just give a, a quick proof of this. So, well, well, so we know that f alpha. Now we know that f alpha. Oh, there we go. F alpha. So this is equal to f alpha so like if i if i take rational things it doesn't matter if i take rational combinations of them or not it's the same thing as if i were to just take you know um polynomial combinations of them and this thing is isomorphic to f of x modulo it's uh, the minimal polynomial and um and so this thing here uh so so here uh in this thing we've talked about this before that that one x bar x bar squared like this x bar to the d uh, minus one uh, forms a basis as an f vector space so all elements of this thing can be uh written as uh, as a combination so why is this so so let me just give, give you kind of a reminder how this works so if if g of x is an f of x, then uh, apply um, and okay. So 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 okay. So then uh, if so, there's kind of two cases. So well, 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 here's what we'll do. Right, g of x is equal to well, q of x m alpha of x plus r of x. Right. This is kind of the fundamental one of these, these fundamental parts of the computation of computing in in uh, uh, simple extension fields is that uh, so we we apply this division algorithm so this thing co comes from the division algorithm so from the division algorithm and um, here the degree of R of X. Uh, is less than the degree of m alpha. Okay, so um, okay, so we write it like this, and this this needs to be true. So this means that uh, okay, so now what happens when we take bars of this thing? So g of x. So this is equal to uh, q. So we'll take take bars of this. We quotiented it out by this plus r of x bar and so this goes away right and then this becomes you know some uh, so this this thing has to be strictly less than degree so this is degree d so this means that this looks like r0 plus r1 x bar plus plus r d minus 1 x bar to the d minus 1 uh, and it's because this has degree strictly less than that so it, it so we so this just showed 
So what we did is we proved the, the so ha, what do you have to do to show that something's a basis, right? To show that something's a basis, you need to show one, that uh, it spans, right? And two, that any trivial, any, any linear, linear combination um, of the, the uh, so any linear combination of the basis elements that is zero must have coefficients all zero. Okay, so here, we proved that um, uh, so that we first this this proves the spanning part. So this thing here proves that uh, span over f of one x bar x bar to the d minus one. So that this is equal to um, this is equal to the whole quotient ring. Okay, and uh, and then if uh, and so the, the the next thing to say is that if um, uh, the, the linear independence was that if uh, you know you had something at c zero plus c one x bar plus plus c d minus one x to the d minus one, if this thing was minus one, oh minus one is equal to zero. So this implies that uh, th this implies essentially that uh, that um, <clears throat> so uh, that that uh, m alpha of x is not uh, minimal, right? Because you could just take um, the polynomial. So so again, what is the bijection here? So so what we did before was that we took um, so we took f of x, we modded it out by m alpha of x, and then this thing was isomorphic to, well, f adjoint alpha. And what we, what, under this bijection, the x bar corresponded to alpha. So the thing in the quotient here corresponded to this alpha. So in, in particular, all the powers of x, x bar correspond to all the powers of alpha. Okay? And what's, what would happen here is that uh, we would have some, so th this would mean that uh, this, so, so the polynomial, so here, let me go up here, let me just say this a little bit better, is that uh, C0 plus C1x plus dot 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 plus C, CD minus one, x to the D minus one. So this would be a polynomial give a polynomial of degree um, uh, so d minus one and so or, or I mean less than or equal to d minus one right um, and uh, that that's too small right so I guess this would give here so it's these two pieces okay so um, that's the, the first part. I'm going to take a pause, look at my notes a, a, a second, and then I'm going to say a little bit more about how, how to compute in uh, simple extensions. All right, so, um, so it has to do with the same trick. So what did we prove? Let me just say again. So um, yeah, so we, we showed that the degree of a simple extension is the degree of the minimal polynomial. We showed that... Um, uh, that, that the minimal polynomial is indeed minimal in the sense that if some other polynomial uh, divided it, uh, sorry, if some other polynomial had alpha as a root, then the minimal polynomial divided it. Uh, we, then we showed this really weird fact that f of x modulo the minimal polynomial is actually a field and that, you know, the, the rational expressions in this alpha come for free. Um, yeah, and so and it all comes via this evaluation map. That, so, all right. So we're going to use this to compute now. Okay. Okie dokie. Let me get back. Okay. So I wanted to add one more thing that's that's really weird about this um, uh, minimal polynomial thing. So one more weird one. Oh, let's go back here. Okay, so one so one weird fact okay about this expression here where is it okay so where is this isomorphism 
So this isomorphism here, I, I want to I prove one more weird thing about this. So here. Okay. So this is starting to get into the weirdness. So, 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 so not weirdness, but kind of this cool part about Galois theory. Okay. Is so uh, I want to add an observation here. An interesting observation. Uh, okay, so here is that, uh, so what we proved is what the F alpha, so alpha was some algebraic number in some extension, right? Um, and what we showed was that this thing was isomorphic to F of X modulo M alpha of X. Okay, so this is some polynomial. So what is weird is that if, so so what does this imply? So, 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 so because this is true if let's say alpha I don't know alpha tilde in K is another root of M alpha X uh, then what do we have so then we have that uh, so then we have an isomorphism of field so so that F F alpha tilde well, this is also, right? This is also f of x modulo m alpha of x. So, uh, in particular, this tells us that that uh, you know f. It doesn't matter what root we took of the minimal polynomial, right? So, so like uh, let's 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 do a more a more concrete example here. So a concrete example. Right. Okay, so we have um, uh, so so okay. I'll, uh, so x squared plus one, right? So here. Uh, okay, this is maybe this. Is, let's see. Do I want to do this one? Uh, let me let me do a better. Let me do a better one. I'll do you I'll do you one better. Okay. Okay. So let's do this. So here, let's take x cubed plus two. Uh, let's do x cubed minus two. Okay, so this thing factors completely as x, and then we have the the real uh, uh, cube root of two, and then we have x minus zeta, and then we have x minus uh, zeta squared. Okay, so there are three roots here of this equation. So this equation has three roots: um, alpha and alpha tilde so we could take this this is two to the one third this could be zeta two to the one third and here zeta is this uh, third uh, a primitive third root of unity um and okay uh i need to get rid of that uh one second stop okay so uh i was here at this example so zeta here is a primitive third root of unity so it's x of 2 pi i divided by 3 and this is in the complex numbers and um, so here it satisfies the equation zeta 3 is equal to 1 okay so that you can expand this out and you can find this and um, and so what do we find so well it, so if we write it out like this then um, so this proposition here that uh, that these two uh, rings are isomorphic. It's, it says that here, uh, so we have an isomorphism Okay, between uh, so we could do uh, Q Adjoin two to the one-third and Q adjoin Zeta two to the one-third so it's a little weird maybe, uh, or counterintuitive because here this one involves complex numbers. Where we go, let's see if I can. So this is, has a complex, this is a complex number. This is only real numbers. All 
right. Um, that is all I wanted to say about that.